All right, so go ahead, Robin. I don't think you need an introduction. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you all for uh, coming, uh, showing up, joining. And, um, you know, as, as always, I, I would like to ask you, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm speaking to my very small laptop, and so I, I have a, uh, only see my own slides. I don't see you. I don't uh, see the chat. So uh, please interrupt at, at any point you feel like doing this, and it, it helps. So, so I know that, that someone's listening. And this is, uh, I decided to do this talk, well, partly because we needed uh, talks to fill up schedule, but also because I was giving similar talks. I gave a few of them. And they were, uh, two of them were, were for philosophers. And um, essentially, uh, this is not a regular uh, seminar uh, talk in, in models of arithmetic. This is something that I was thinking about when I was teaching a course for philosophers about the role of, of first order logic. And first order logic, you know, is, this is something that you learn about in your introductory course in, in mathematical logic <clears throat> and it becomes like a lingua franca for everything else that happens later <clears throat> and we become very very sort of uh, uh, attached to to basic notions there and then I remember also when I when I learned it long long time ago when I was a student uh, and at some point uh, I this was Victor Mare who was teaching a course on models of arithmetic and at some point you know, he proved to us that uh, uh, truth is not definable. I was incredibly, incredibly excited about this result. I was excited because I did not know that one can speak mathematically about truth and I did not know that one could prove things about it. And the fact that something is undefinable suddenly, the truth is undefinable, it seemed extremely excite, exciting to me. But now, you know, I'm, when, when I grew older, uh, nothing seems so exciting anymore. Uh, some people uh, in the audience perhaps would agree, and I've heard opinions that, you know, Tarski's theorem is essentially a triviality. There is not really much in it. It's incredibly important for various applications, but it's really, it's, it's a theorem not about truth. It's not about arithmetical truth. It is just a theorem of limitations of first order logic. And um, so I was teaching this course for philosophers. I talked about definability. I, instead of concentrating on provability, you know, the, the recent trends in model theory uh, is to sort of take advantage of the concept of definability and definability, not just in first order logic, but in all kinds of extensions of it and the meaning of what's definable is undefinable and how it relates to uh, ordinary mathematical practice. Those are, th those are interesting topics. And I think in the case of arithmetic, arithmetic, we know everything essentially that there is to know about it, but those do, do things haven't been explored as much as they probably could have been even a long time ago. So I, 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 what, what I'm going to talk about is a survey of, of, of results that most of you already know very, very well, but just in an attempt to make some sense out of those results. So anyway, so please feel free to ask me any questions and feel free to disagree with me and, and uh, contest what I'm saying. One of the things, I talked a little bit about, about the, uh, the, the content of my talk with uh, Ali and Ayat, and he did not like the uh, term that I'm using here in the title, absolute undefinability. Uh, and because he said that you know, for model theorists, absoluteness already has uh, some absolute meaning. They know what absoluteness means, and it doesn't mean what I mean. And I was looking for a better term. So when you, when you listen and uh, if something, some better term comes to mind, please let me know. Okay, but so far I like absolute undefinability, so I will stick to it, but I, I'll, I'll be happy to change if something uh, appropriate comes up. Anyway, so, so this is what the, what the talk uh, is going to be about. So do you see my cursor when I, when I move it around? Yeah. Okay, so that, that, that will help. Look, so essentially it will be arithmetic. So, so first, you know, we have natural numbers, but at the beginning, it doesn't really matter if they are natural numbers or not. This is just a countable set. And then we keep expanding it to get more and more of arithmetic. So the first step is to just look at it as a chain, successor chain, natural numbers with a successor, not, not even necessarily a function, a successor relation. And then you expand it by adding uh, the ordering and then addition. And these are not really, uh, Usual expansions, I call those are definitional expansions because you know we're not we're not forgetting about the old structure. It just it's not it's not staying with us because the old relations are definable from the new ones. 
So successor is clearly definable from the ordering and the ordering is definable from, from, from addition. And every time I say uh, definable, I really mean uh, first order definable without parameters. Parameters will, will come in later, but uh, so first order definable without parameters. And then from, 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 from addition, you go to full addition and multiplication to the standard model of arithmetic. And again, it's very important that multiplication is not definable from addition, even though you know, it's, uh, we tell kids in second grade that it is. And, and then the key at the end is this, you know, Tarski's undefinability of truth or undefinability of satisfaction. You had another predicate on top of everything. And actually we can keep going, there is more, but mathematical action stops sort of at, at the level of addition multiplication because now this structure is already so rich that it's hard to see what else could be added to it to make a more arithmetic structure. It's already for arithmetic, for number theory, it already has everything that, that one, 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 one would want. To, to investigate. So, so what we're going to do, you know, I will I will show you a very, very quick proof why, why uh, ordering is not definable. Like actually, not uh, no linear ordering is definable from the successor relation. And then when we move up, uh, I will show you a simple proof that uh, the ordered uh, structure of natural numbers is minimal. The only sets definable in it are, are finite and cofinite sets. Uh, but then clearly uh, uh, the additive structure of the natural numbers is not minimal. Even numbers are, are easily definable. So this one is not minimal. That will be a proof that addition is not definable from the ordering. Then to, to show that there are, there are countless ways, countless ways of showing that multiplication is not definable. So there are many arguments for it, but I like the one that uses characterization uh, due to Ginsburg and Spanier. Uh, characterization of definable sets in the additive structure. And those sets are called ultimately periodic. So, you know, they can begin with some arbitrary mess, but starting at a certain point, they become periodic. There is a period that uh, gives you this relationship between. You can hear that? No, I'm not going to be able to, but do you mind keeping it on for. Oh, well, if I want. Okay. All right, and so you know, and since the squares are not ultimately periodic and clearly definable in the multiplicative structure, that's 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 a straightforward proof that multiplication is not definable from addition. Okay, but look, but but the, the same. So, what are these theorems about? They're really theorems about uh, uh, weakness of first order logic. First order logic doesn't have uh, means to express those more complex structures in terms of the of the less com complex, well, as essentially because as, as, as everyone knows, finiteness is not, is not definable and uh, you cannot convert recursive definitions easily or sometimes not at all uh, to explicit definitions. Uh, but otherwise there is nothing mysterious. It's not like that we don't know what multiplication is. If you understand addition, you also understand what multiplication is. You don't know certain facts about multiplication, but but it's clearly definable in terms of of, uh, of addition, and the same addition is clearly definable in terms of the successor relation and so on. So, uh, so what I'm going to talk about is stronger undefinability results, not in the standard models, but in non-standard models of arithmetic, and for that the main tool will be automorphisms. Well, and clearly this tool does not apply to anything standard because anything standard, it, you know, the st standard model starting from the successor relation is rigid, has no automorphisms at all. So they are essentially useless uh, there, but uh, we'll use the fact that uh, all definable sets are setwise uh, preserved uh, under all uh, automorphic images, under all automorphisms. Uh, but it, this is a property or, you know, we prove it for first order logic and it's a simple inductive proof on complexity of formulas. But the fact is that it holds not for first order logic, but for any formal system whatsoever, because what, this is what formal systems are supposed to be. Uh, logical systems, logical properties should be preserved under isomorphism. This is uh, close to Tarski's definition. Tarski wondered about you know, the, what, what are logical notions. And uh, his, his suggestion was that those are exactly those that are preserved under all permutations of structures. And the permutation of structure in this case is meant, by, I understand, uh, an automorphism. So you preserve the basic structure and see what else is preserved. And if you, something is preserved under all logical operations, then all, all permutation is logical. 
And uh, there is a beautiful, so the, the predecessor of, of many results I'll be talking about is the theorem of Swenonius. Ali uh, in, uh, reminded me about it, that uh, not, not, not only a relation is, uh, so if a relation is undefinable, well, it might be on a rigid model, like on the standard model, so we don't know anything about uh, its automorphic, you know, auto automorphic images of a relation. But if a relation is undefinable, then there will be some elementary equivalent structure with an elementary equivalent relation on it and an automorphism of that structure that moves it. So, so this will be the link from, from, from uh, to, to, to study. So, so to prove that something is undefinable, you don't really have to stick to your ground model. You have to stick to the standard model. You might as well look at, uh, at its uh, uh, non-standard elementarily equivalent versions that have automorphisms and look for this sort of automorphism that move a certain set there. And uh, this is a way to prove that some relation is undefinable on the ground in the grant model. I like it very much. Okay, so so this is these are the two proofs. I will go over, over them quickly. These are the facts that you that you know very well. But the point is to talk a little bit about the structure of non-standard models of arithmetic. So the whole point is that so so um, this is uh, the situation. Uh, this is these are the natural numbers with the successor relation. This is an elementary extension. So the question, what does it look like? But it doesn't take much uh, to to realize that all those elementary extensions look like this. There are some non-standard elements in it, like C and D. There could be just one, but there could be more. There could be many. And now, uh, because because of elementarity, elementarity, you know, there is only one least element in the natural numbers and every other element has a success, successor and a predecessor. So this holds for every non-zero element in the extension. So each non-standard element is an element of a, what I call a Z chain, something that is isomorphic to the, to the integers with the successor relation. And now it's a trivial observation that if you have two such Z chains, then when you swap them, uh, you know, by, by you know, sending C to D and D to C and then everybody else according to the successor uh, relation uh, and keeping everything else constant, then this is an automorphism of the successor structure, but clearly would mess up any ordering on the natural numbers. So if there were, were any, okay, so there cannot be any definable or linear ordering because it would transmit by elementarity to this extension but then this automorphism would mess it up, a contradiction. So, so no linear ordering on the natural numbers is definable in the structure. It's, it's, it's a beautiful sh short proof. Uh, but now the point is now that also this picture shows us this classification of, of models of uh, the successor relation. You, you, you can say, well, there's something like a dimension of the model. You, you can count the number of those Z chains. Okay, and if the Z change, if, if an extension, well, now it takes a little bit more work to show that any extension of, of the natural numbers with any number of those Z chains, unordered, just the Z chains, uh, is an elementary extension. You can use RM for express games to prove it. Maybe there are some other ways to do it. Um, there, there are elegant arguments using RM for express games. So they are all elementary extensions. And so there is something uh, uh, like a dimension. And it's, uh, it's easy to see that, maybe I have this on some other slide. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll wait for it for, for the slide, but you can see that, uh, 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 you know, that there are always automorphisms because you can always shift things, elements up and up uh, along any Z chain, uh, but uh, also, Okay, so right, so there's something that follows about expandability of this structure to the model of models of ordering. But uh, I, I have it on the next slide, so on, on, on the few next slides, so I'll, I'll wait for it. Any questions about what's on this slide? Uh, no. I, you're assuming that this M is countable, right? No. No? Not uh, any. No, but when you say that the number of automorphisms is continuing... Oh, no, no, right. So, yeah, right. right, so, so, yeah. so here for, for this last statement, right. Right, yeah. Right, right, right. Right, but I'm, right. So I, what, for most of I say it would be only about countable models. Uh, and so when uncountable models come in, uh, uh, this will be explicitly mentioned. 
Okay, and look, and this is this, you, um, I think all of you have, have seen it that uh, the ordering on the natural numbers is minimal. And, and again, just to see the difference, you know, what, what, what the ordering brings, uh, every model is also a union. So this is, this is my picture of the non-standard. Uh, this is the picture of my non-standard model, the standard part. And then you have those Z chains, like in, in the successor relation, but now they are all linearly ordered, the Z chains and the elements inside them. And there are some non-standard blocks like that, non-standard Z chains, and suppose, that uh, natural numbers uh, are not minimal. So there is some set, there is some formula that defines the set that comes in infinitely many pieces. Okay, so which means each of those pieces must have the top element. So it means that arbitrarily high for every X, there will be Y and Z that are above it. And uh, such that uh, uh, Z is a successor of Y and Y has the property defined by phi and Z does not. Okay, these are the top elements of those of those parts of the sets defined above by uh, phi. And what's wrong with it? Well, then this property uh, uh, that uh, is expressed here is carried. I'm sorry about this. When I when I move my when I move my mouse uh, uh, mouse, then uh, uh, the slides also shift. So I don't know why this is happening. I'll try to avoid that. Uh, look, so 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 the same uh, sentence is true in the uh, non-standard extension. So there must be some non-standard element and uh, C such that phi is true of C and false of the successor of it. Okay, this is the successor defined in terms of the ordering. Okay, but this is clearly wrong because then again there is an automorphism. You can shift everybody up by by one in this one particular Z chain and fix everything else. And this automorphism will carry C to C plus one, but that cannot be because you know, they have different first order properties, but this means that this phi cannot be first order, cannot be definable. So, so it's a short, short argument. And so uh, uh, ordering- I have a question? Yes. Okay, so uh, by minimality here, we mean that every set uh, that is definable is a union of points and intervals? Uh, no, uh, uh, well- uh, It will be all minimality. Uh, that's all minimality, simply- Oh, finite and cofinite, okay. The finite, yeah. because this is, even Sorry. though it's an ordered structure, this is a strange, a simple structure mm -hmm. that is actually minimal. Not, not, not only all minimal, it is minimal. In, in this sense, as Andres was saying. Okay. Every, every definable set is either finite or cofinite. All right. So let's move on. Okay. Wait. So this is the end. Of, so, so this is the end of the argument that addition is not definable from the ordering because addition, uh, the additive structure is definitely not minimal. Okay. Look. So now my point is this: that this what I had been promoting when I talked to philosophers that first order logic did, gives you what I called logic visibility, and and. And with, in parallel to what is actually done in mathematics, you start with a structure with some set, basic set of functions, relations, and constants. And then you start uh, producing other functions, relations, and constants from the basic ones by means of Boolean connections. So that's Boolean uh, connect connectives and boots of that Boolean operations, natural mathematical operations, unions and intersections and complements. And then you have quantification uh, which corresponds to existential quantification that corresponds to projections. And then uh, universal one goes through complements and, and projections, you know, is defined through, uh, through existential uh, quantification. And, um, and then you have Cartesian products because you, because you have an arbitrary number of variables. You can take a formula in X and combine it with a formula in Y. And then the, what you get is a set that's defined as a Cartesian product of the, the sets defined by those two formulas. So have very basic mathematical operations and to each of those operations corresponds a, a logical connective or quantifier. Okay, and it's all very natural. And that's why I call it, if you have a definable set, first of all, the definable set, the, the definition is telling you how the set has been obtained by applying those basic operations. Okay, so this is a sort of geometry, a very natural geometry on, on first order structures. So now if you go just a little bit up to the, what's called L omega one omega, which you're adding to first order, 
is um, unions and um, uh, infinite conjunctions and infinite disjunctions countable um, of formulas as long as they have a fixed number of free variables, fixed finite number of free variables. So at the end, when you form those conjunctions as disjunctions, they still, each of them defines a subset of some finite and fault Cartesian uh, power of the of the universe of the structure of the domain of the structure. So what you're adding uh, is really very little on top of what we had in terms of mathematical practice. You're just uh, adding countable unions on intersections of sets. Not much. Okay, this is all still very mathematically robust, and uh, and uh, it's a sort of logical uh, visibility a little bit extended. Now, as you all know, by a theorem of Scott. Every countable structure uh, uh, in a countable language uh, can be characterized completely by a sentence of L omega one omega. So it looks like a like an over. You know, this is an analog to saying that every finite structure can be characterized up to if isomorphism by a sentence of of uh, L omega omega first order logic. So that's an analog going one step up. But but that's not the, so. In this sense, this L omega one omega is a little bit of an overkill. Every structure is uniquely determined by its L omega one omega theory. But the point is that the sentence that characterizes the structure now is becoming as complex as the structure itself. You know, the, the complexity of those uh, sentences measured by countable ordinals. So there are structures of arbitrary high. Uh, countable ordinal complexity. So there's a little bit overkill from the point of view of mathematical practice. Nothing wrong from the point of view of mathematical logic, but uh, but now if you consider just this one extension that you allow a little bit of it, you just add add disjunctions uh, to to the language conjunctions we already have in terms of types and theories, but you add disjunctions and suddenly everything becomes beautifully definable. So here is here is an example of a of a formula that defines ordering from from the successor relation. Now you just say that x is less than y if there are n elements in between in the successor relation. Okay, so either y is a successor of x or there are n elements in between them. So it's clearly, a, you know, it's a beautiful, simple definition. There is nothing mysterious about it. It's a, it's a simple disjunction of basic formulas in the link between the successor relation. And then similarly, you know, plus and times are definable. So, and look, and this is really because we have countable union. So if you have a countable relation, on a structure that's uh, 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 where all, every element has a definition, then you can define any relation on it because it will be a countable union of, of single instances of the relation. So there, so there is nothing, absolutely nothing mysterious here, but I didn't write them down because they will be a little longer, but the recursive definitions of plus and times can be written neatly as uh, L omega one and omega formulas, just, just uh, you know, very simple, surveyable, computable uh, disjunctions of first order formulas. So can give so they give clear visibility of how multiplication relates to addition. And later on, we will talk about truth. Also, the truth can be easily written um, in such a way. So just this small step from L omega omega to L omega one omega gives you a lot of visibility. What was undefinable before becomes definable now. Okay. So this is a little bit. Uh, a sort of a, a kind of anticlimactic point, you know, something really, you know, the first of the logic is so weak that it cannot express those those, those things about richer and richer relations and functions, but a small uh, a small adjustment to it will. But still, there is something to be said about about these connections, about ordering, addition, multiplication, and truth, and other things. If you go to non-standard models, so and when we go to non-standard models, the important uh, Concept would be that of resplendency. So, so let me uh, let me remind you uh, briefly what it is. So, you, you have this structure M, uh, an infinite structure, and it's said to be resplendent that whenever you have some first order property of a relation in the language of the structure. By language, I mean the signature of the structure, and uh, with parameters. And if there is some elementary extension of the structure on which there is a relation having the property, then there is already such a relation on the, on the original structure. So this is a saturation property with respect uh, to, to second order properties. 
And um, that's a notion due to Barweis and Schlipf, resplendence. And so, few examples. So, why is the standard model of, of uh, successor not resplendent? Well, look at this sentence that says that A is an initial segment of the ordering relation of the successor relation closed on the successor, but a proper one. So, clearly, uh, the natural numbers do not have such a subset. But every elementary extension of, of this structure has, for example, the standard cut would be an interpretation of this, of this A here. So, so, uh, so the standard model is not resplendent. It's a simple example, but, but an, you know, an instructive one. I'll, 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 I'll return to this later. So now I will follow with a more detailed discussion of what's happening uh, with definability in non-standard models of the, of the theories of the standard model of something, at least with the successor relation. There could be more, but uh, uh, I want at least the successor relation because much will be based on, on the properties of the successor because I need to talk about those Z chains in elementary extensions, you know, Z chains in the models of this of this theory. Okay, so there is an equivalence relation. Uh, I say the two elements are equivalent if the distance is uh, finite and distance is defined in the, uh, uh, in terms of the successor relation, as before, you just count the number of elements between uh, A and B, uh, and it, and if it's finite, then the distance is finite, and and the dimension is the number of equivalence classes. So, in other words, the dimension of the model is the number of those G Z chains. So, what about resplendence? So, if you have a model, it's it's not it's a nice exercise if you're teaching introduction to model theory or anything else that uh, that if you have a model of finite if you have a model with finite number of those z chains then it's not resplendent and it's not difficult to see why and but then all other models will be resplendent so if just if the dimension is infinite that the model will be resplendent and if the model is uh, and here i'm missing let's see what i'm saying here well, and here uh, you, 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 you let, let's assume so I don't run into troubles that all models are countable, okay? Because this is, uh, I'm saying here that the countable model uh, is resplendent. Uh, so you look at the ordering uh, on, on the non standard extension of N with the ordering is resplendent if the structure of the Z chains the, is isomorphic. So one stands for the natural numbers followed by a densely many copies so of, of, of the of z okay so there is only one so in the can in, in the case also you know so in the case of countable models of of the successor relation there is only one resplendent model there is one of dimensional f0 and in the case of the ordering there is only one resplendent countable resplendent model and there is one that looks exactly like that Okay, so this is what I'm saying here. There's only one countable resplendent model of the theory of the successor and only one countable resplendent model of the theory of the ordering. Okay. Excuse me. So when I take a countable non-standard model of arithmetic with ordering that is not recursively saturated, i.e. not resplendent, uh, the then... There aren't any for countable models. Uh, uh... Okay, because the, the, order, the ordering must be you know, because the ordering is definable from addition. So an addition is always recursively saturated. I'm talking about the, you know, what's happening in the uncountable case, uh, it's somewhat murky, but in the countable case, I, I, I will talk about it. But wait, it is, it is possible to have non standard models of arithmetic that are not recursively saturated. But I talk right. about the redux. Oh, sure. Sorry, but... Ah, okay. So you say that the, uh, only the redux that doesn't see additional multiplication. So it's just for the ordering then. No, no. So I'll say about it. So look, so what is true, this is on my, I'm probably on my next slide. Okay, let's, see, let's see if it's on my next slide. Uh, no, no, look... no, I get it. I, I made a mistake that you're, the, the, can, you, can you go back? Yeah. So here it is essential that it is a model of theory of natural numbers with ordering without any additional. That's right. Uh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Right, so these are really sort of the baby, the baby arithmetics. There is no arithmetic yet. Right, so the the ordering of all non-standard models are isomorphic, are countable. Huh? 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's yeah. just one. There's just yeah, one, exactly. one type. And then, yeah, exactly. but, but, but but you can ask, but which 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 ones are resplendent? And the answer is only the one that looks like that. Right. And nobody else is. Okay. So now, so so here is this my um, uh, look. So, so this this proposition here applies not just to L omega one omega, but as I said before, something like this. When when you look at behavior of automorphic images of relations on a structure, uh, th those facts will apply. Counting the number of those images will apply to anything that's defined with any logical system. Um, so if I have a, a countable, countable structure. And if I have a relation that's a omega one omega definable, and uh, um, and even with para or with parameters, be because what can happen, you know, if, if R has a definition with parameters, that uh, parameters can move, so the relation can move together, may or may not move together with the parameters, but since there are countably many parameters, there will be only at most countably many uh, automorphic images. Okay, and I say here what I said. That this applies to any any reasonable formal system, logical formal system. So that's what I what I call uh, a, a, a relation on a countable model, absolutely undefinable. You cannot define it in any logical extension of the of first order logic if it has continuum many automorphic images. Okay, so clearly there are not, there is nothing absolutely undefinable on the natural numbers <laughs> because it's a pointwise definable structure and everything is. is Everything's rigid. There is no, there are no automorphisms. So, it's it's a useless notion for models that have less than continuum many automorphisms. But so, but this notion only will apply to models that have those automorphisms. Okay. Look. So now, what's the connection between resplendence and expandability? That this all those things have been explored in depth uh, in 1970s and 1980s by Barwise, Schlips, uh, Schlips, and then other people in Warsaw by by um, Krajewski, Kotlarski, and other people. I, I'm, I'm sure that, that much has been done. Uh, Roman Buraski has done done work on expandability. The, 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 those were popular subjects then, but so my remarks here are, are some, somewhat simple because they are about those very simple structures that we can very clear classification theories for. So if you have a model of the successor of dimension of finite dimension, then you know of course you can you know how do you expand the model uh, by by adding an ordering that's compatible with the successor relation? Well, you have to order the z chains the way they are ordered. But you have uh, leeway in deciding the ordering of the z chains, and if you have n z chains, you can permute them in n factorial ways. Uh, then, um, uh, then, uh, and every and uh, so all those uh, all those orderings are isomorphic to one another, and you can permute them. But they're only each each only has a finite number of automorphic images. So they and it's not difficult to see that they're all definable from parameters because you can choose one parameter from each z chain and then decide how those parameters are ordered and then expand this ordering by an L omega one omega simple simple L omega one omega formula to tell to, to describe how the ordering spreads through the model from those parameters. So, so nothing happens in finitely dimensional models, but if you go to infinitely dimensional, then again, you have the, your task to, uh, uh, when you construct an expansion to the ordering, your task is to, to order the Z chains. And now we have an infinite set of Z chains. So, so the, and then you can, you can prove that for every linearly ordered set, there is an expansion that, such that the Z chains are ordered exactly as the linearly ordered here. There are continuum many linear countable linearly ordered sets, and uh, so no, there are there are continuum many expansions, and all expansions are absolutely undefinable, and that's not difficult to see. That you know because it's very easy. You know this this structure admits lots and lots of automorphism. This the successor structure, and, and so so it's it's easy to mess up uh, any ordering given in advance of the z chains. So, so 
you cannot, you, you just cannot do it. And this is, there is something quite fundamental here that you know in model theory, that I'm happy Dave is here if he's still listening, that you know, everyone knows that ordering is really what brings complexity to structures, even though it seems simple. Okay, these are just theories of the of, of, of linear value order sets, but this is where complexity comes from, set theoretic complexity. All right, so so fr from the ordering, we go to Pressburger. And um, so, um, so this is, uh, again, this is an exercise in Pressburger. In, you know, this is from, from the axioms of Pressburger, from, from simple school axioms of, of uh, additive arithmetic. Uh, one can show that the Z blocks of any non-standard model uh, must be ordered densely without uh, first and last element. So it means that the ordering of each model of Pressburger is the one that we talked about before, is the resplendent one. So the, and also conversely. So uh, if you have a model of, you know, this one, there is just one countable model of, of, of the theory of the ordering that's resplendent, then you can expand it to, uh, uh, to a model of Pressburger in uh, two to alex zero non-isomorphic ways. And that just follows from a simple fact that there are uh, two to the LF zero, there are continuum many non-isomorphic, countable non-isomorphic models of Pressburger. And that is because they, for example, they all have standard systems. And um, for every countable Scott set, there will be a model of Pressburger with uh, that Scott set as a standard system and sets with models with different uh, standard systems are non-isomorphic. There are, there are uh, continuum many countable Scott sets and that gives you continuum many non-isomorphic models, but they all live on the same order type. So that's something that follows from general knowledge about things. Now, but there is something new about, look, um, that uh, I, I wondered, you know, about, about uh, absolute undefinability of those, uh, of expansions. You know? That I thought that maybe there is some way of defining addition from the ordering just by by some no no in some uh, extension of first order logic, and and you know this is because there are and it's not it's not easy to see what they look like. Uh, there are rigid uh, rigid models of countable models of Presburg arithmetic. There are very few. Remember, there are no rigid models of the successor, no rigid models of the ordering. Uh, but uh, for the for the Pressburger, there are uh, Yezabek. I think a few years ago wrote a very interesting paper, uh, Emil Yezabek, uh, characterizing completely uh, rigid non-standard model of Pressburger. And so I asked him a question, and he provided a very nice, elegant answer uh, to show that each extension, that even though even those uh, rigid ones. Uh, have this property that uh, the addition is not L omega one omega definable from the uh, from the ordering. They they all are absolutely undefinable. Questions? Nope. Okay. So look. So so this is what can happen in general. Okay. So so you have some uncountable structure for a countable language. And it could be a single sentence on an axiomatizable, you know, computably axiomatizable. Right, Roman, could you go back to the last statement? Yeah. So, Okay. Okay. Thanks. Right. Right. So, uh, Dave. So, do you see how to prove it? No. No. It's it's the absolutely that makes it. R right. 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 No. Absolutely. Okay. That, 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 otherwise, no. No. But it's a very nice short argument, but a very nice one. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I just didn't have enough time to, to to do it here. But you can think of it as an exercise. It's it's, it's a nice observation. All right, so what can happen in general, you have some countable structure, you have axiomatizable theory of some relation on it. And, um, and suppose, you know, it's consistent. So there are some that uh, with the theory of the model, so you can expand, uh, uh, there are expansions um, to, to the theory. So, well, so it could be a definable one, okay, so that's the, 
first order two, you just want a relation and oh, here it is, you actually define it in some way, but with some parameters or maybe no uh, parametric definable expansions, but some of them could be L omega one omega definable. Okay, there are still somewhat visible, logically visible, we can describe what they look like in L omega one omega, but there also, and there we, have, we have seen example of in the case of ordering and Pressburger was this case when uh, you can expand and there are lots and lots of expansions, but none of them, uh, all of them are absolutely undefined. Okay, so that, that was the last example of, of ordering of uh, non-standard models of the ordering and ex expansion to Pressburger. And then, but when we move up to Peano arithmetic, there is this other interesting case that suppose that well, this you know, this T of R could be something very exotic, and I'm you know since I'm really interested here in in things that sort of relate somehow to, to ordinary mathematical practice, I want to talk about some properties you know, of a relation on a structure that I call intrinsic. But this is not this is a vague notion. Intrinsic means somehow really relates directly to say if we talk about addition multiplication, you want some number theoretic property, something that relates to numbers or functions on numbers or something, something that would make sense to a non-logician. And suppose you have a theory. No. So here we would say T of R. Uh, it's kind of vague. I mean it's an axiomatizable theory. Right, the first order, in the language of A, right? Or do you admit uh, axiomatizations uh, stronger than first oh, no, no, order? No. Oh, no, 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 At this point, I, I, I so this is this is uh, uh, in a uh, first order. Just a typical because, and that because only because we have examples of, of of situations like that. One could certainly go beyond first order. Right. It, it, it will be then, another just, special case. Yes. I'm just trying to, to pin down what, so is this a property of A or is this a property of the, of this theory or, or what? So, no, so these are the, you know, so you're given a structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is, this is localized. So again, I wanted to keep things as down to sort of special cases as possible. You could talk about these things more, let's see, maybe about the theory of A. Or other, you know, some models of A. But I'm, I, what was given in, in this preamble here is that a structure is given, and this is what can happen for this structure. Uh, but I, but I, no, but you, you're right that this can be sort of extended in in different ways. You can ask all kinds of different questions about it. But I formulated it this way because of the examples that are coming up. You can also perhaps think about. Uh... Oh, the TOR, it's not really about type definability. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, right. So, 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 so I, I, I see that, but, but you see, but, but, but what is also interesting, and this is what uh, Mateusz, uh, where we can bat of Chiswo talked about uh, at Cornell, there, there are these sort of second, so properties of relations that force certain properties on a model. And so the key, the key thing is that also, because there's a special property that you have some theory of some relation, an expandability to that to that theory already forces something about the structure. And for example, it forces uh, resplendence. Okay. They, 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 they were actually trying to find out what those properties are. Can you characterize, characterize the model, model theoretically? It was actually some, a very nice work. They, they write, uh, the paper is not quite finished, but they, they're writing a joint paper on it. They, they, uh, so that's um, also with, with Montalban or this. No, no, the, the, this, the, this, this is done in Warsaw. Ah, okay, okay, okay. okay. Wewick and Chiswo. I, I have those names later, if I, if I get to it. Okay, so, so he, okay, so, so now we, we, we go to the PA case. So non-standard model of key. So now this is something that, you know, this is just a bullet in my, in my itemized list, but it's, a, it's a actually, you know, a, Interesting. Okay, what am I doing here? So sorry about that. Okay, so this is just an, uh, a bullet, but it, it's a lot of work that goes into it and it can be proved in many different ways. But if you have a model of PA that, and, or even a much weaker system than PA, then both redux to, well, to addition and multiplication are regardlessly saturated. So in the case of countable N, uh, those redux are resplendent. Okay. So now suppose we have uh, a resplendent, countable resplendent model of Pressburger. 
So what is known is that, again, the question I'm, I'm considering is expandability and then definability of those expansions. So what happens? How, how can we add a multiplication to a resplendent model? Of, well, because a model is resplendent and it's consistent that there is a multiplication on it, and that is because multiplication is also uh, Axiomatizable, and this is uh, thanks. This this is actually ultimately due to Patrick Segelski only from 1980s. It was known, Scholem proved in the 30s that the theory of multiplication is definable, is is decidable, and but uh, the proof went through some you know the language that is not quite specified. It uses integer parts and other things. Uh, he gets decidability of the theory of the of the um, uh, uh, multiplicative structure of the natural numbers, but to get uh, axiomatization, one has to sort of, it's, it's not that obvious what this axiomatization should be, and Patrick has a, shows what the, what the axiomatization looks like. So thanks to it, if you have a resplendent model of Pressburger, it is expandable to a model of PA, but, um, but then it's not difficult to show that uh, it, uh, it actually has continuum. Uh, non-isomorphic expansions to models of PA. And, you know, this is a short argument for those who know uh, about it, they can see how to do it. And I you know, don't, okay, those are kind of general uh, facts about non-standard models of PA and uh, how the isomorphic types of addition, additive and multiplicative structures are completely determined by the standard system. So this just follows from it. But, not, but what, what about uh, also the connection between multiplication and addition is this, that if I have one, the same model and have two multiplications on it, you know, they can, I have, have continuum of different multiplications, but if we take two of them and um, then they are isomorphic to one another. And, but this is not necessarily true for uncountable models. That's interesting that you know you cannot really extend this to, to, un, to uncountable models. In the other direction, this is also true. If the redux to uh, multiplications are isomorphic, then the redux to addition, uh, this carries through in the other direction, but it's not true for, uh, for uncountable models. But no, but now the question is about expansions. So how, how they are, could, can they be possibly definable in, in L omega one omega? And here I, I, I asked uh, Alf Dolich and Simon Heller, and they both came up with the same answer. No, uh, actually, whatever multiplication you have on this resplendent model of Pressburger, then you can actually show this, this multiplication has continuum uh, many automorphic images. And this is based on the fact that every resplendent model of, of Pressburger has one, but actually has many uh, elements, something like C and C squared. And they have the same uh, additive type, but clearly they cannot have the same multiplicative type. And then you use this to build a tree of continuum many uh, images of a given uh, of a given multiplication. So, so again, so multiplication, you know. So what those results really mean, like what that the theory of the PA or those arguments can be made about true arithmetic, the full theory of of the standard model, that the theory have, has nothing really to say about the connection between addition and multiplication. The theory doesn't know how multiplication is connected to addition. Or in simple words, if you have a non-standard element in, a, in, a, in an additive structure, then this additive structure has no idea what C squared should be. And C squared can be assigned in many, many, many ways. So, so th I think those are interesting results to maybe to explain sort of in more detail to a non-logic community, why is it so that multiplication is not related to addition in a simple way? What makes it, what makes it so complex? And what makes it so complex that the theory of addition doesn't know about multiplication. The standard model, of course, does, but the theory doesn't. So, Roman, yes. uh, what's the assumption in the fourth bullet point? Uh, I guess I didn't say M is countable. Right. But I mean, can't you still code reals into a model of a model of multiplication? You can. But I'm so I mean, I think you no, would. No, no, but it, but this is the same M. Okay. Oh, okay, got it. 
Uh, um, the same, the same edition, same M plus. It's exactly the same edition. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Look, so let me see how much time I have because because now no, I I really want to say a few things about undefinability of truth, and I, I have you know. Look, so so now what is known in general about this whole situation and counting automorphic images? So first of all. Bauer and Schlipp observed early that every resplendent, countable resplendent model has a large automorphism group, size continuum. And, and, but then Scott, and it follows from Scott's isomorphism theorem, uh, you know, the Scott categoricity theorem that every L omega one omega, that every countable structures can be characterized by uh, an L omega one omega sentence. And it follows that if you are in a structure, any countable structure for a countable language, so in particular, if you have in a rigid structure and if a relation uh, on it has, uh, you know, it's, it's pointwise fixed by, setwise fixed by any, any automorphism, that it must be a omega one omega definable. So on rigid models, all relations are a omega one omega definable. It's not, it's not surprising once one knows Scott's theorem, but this was just a corollary that Scott observed. But then Kicker and independently Reyes, and they both did it, uh, David Kicker and Gonzalo Reyes, independently in their PhD thesis, proved this beautiful theorem that these two statements are equivalent for any countable structure for a countable language, that either the relation has fewer, uh, you know, uh, than continue many um, uh, automorphisms, which means that it must have less than or equal uh, uh, countably many, Aleph zero. Uh, automorphic Im automorphic image images, and that is equivalent to uh, the relation being parametrically definable in M. Uh, and again, so one direction is obvious because you know this is because of L omega one omega is a logical system. Uh, what 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 is uh, brilliant is to how to come up with a with a definition of, of a relation given the fact that it has uh, just few automorphic images. Anyway, so that's the connection. And uh, and now there's another theorem of Schlipp. Well, well, actually two theorems of Schlipp. So the first of all, countable resplendent models are chronically resplendent. So the resplendent uh, speaks about expandability. And it says, if you have a consistent property, uh, a property consistent with the theory of a model, then a model already has a relation um, that uh, behaves like this property says here. And but chronic resplendency says that uh, it does it in such a way that the expansion is again a resplendent model. So that's uh, that's stronger. And it's important here that the assumption is countable. It's not known whether this holds for uncountable models. And then if you have a resplendent uh, pair, so if the model together with this new relation is countable and resplendent then, and this relation is undefinable, not first order definable with parameters, then it must have continued many automorphic images. So this is what I have, why I say here that the absolute undefinability is unavoidable. So if you, if you have some property uh, such that uh, you, you uh, that forces the relation to be undefinable, but is consistent, then by chronic resplendency, there will be a, resplendent model of it, but if this model is resplendent and the relation is undefinable, then it's absolutely undefinable already. So any property uh, such that, as I, as, I, as I said before, must have uh, expansions for any property like this, there are expansions that are absolutely undefinable. So this is a thing that you cannot avoid absolute undefinability for certain properties like initial segment, automorphism, uh, satisfaction class. I'll be talking about those things in a moment if I have enough time. So, so this is really this question that I, that I was interested in. That uh, so, and especially in, more, in in the case that I know something about, in case of arithmetic, that what are those properties uh, such that force this absolute undefinability? Okay, because there are situations. For example, a simple state uh, example of a property that is not like that would be phi of i where I would say I am a, a, a proper cut in a model of arithmetic. Okay, so none of those cuts is definable, but of course there are some cuts that are L omega one omega definable, for example, the standard cut. And then, you know, by this, uh, by this remark that you cannot 
avoid being uh, you know, instances of absolute undefinability. There also will be cuts that have continued many images, but you know, it can go both ways. So I'm asking you, know, what are those very special properties like multiplication on a model of addition, um, such that no expansion uh, has an omega one omega definition. So they all expansions are absolutely undefinable. And look, I don't have that much time and maybe I will skip you know, because some of you actually uh, have heard my talk. Uh, what, what, I, what I have a part of the talk is a very quick proof of Tarski's undefinability, but this, this is just to sort of stress one more time that there is nothing very deep about the theorem in the sense of difficulty of the proof, uh, but you know, it's deep in, in, in terms of, of, of consequences. But let me just go to the last slide where I have the list of sort of things that are examples of those five Rs. And what I'm interested in maybe, maybe is some general theorem, some more general understanding what those properties are, where do they come from? Okay, so let, let, let me go quickly. Okay, so, so formula. Will you, will, you, will you put slides on the site of MOPA? Uh, I, we could, and I can just send you this. That would be great, thanks. I, I can. Because you know, in principle, we do it, but then eventually, nothing ever ends up there. I don't know how how it goes, but I, I I will I will send them to Vika as well. Okay, look. So very quickly. So in the model of arithmetic, and most of you know it, that the class is something that's piece you know piecewise definable. Every initial segment of a set must be definable, parametrically definable. So so those those uh, subsets of uh, of model of PR classes. Uh, it's not difficult to see that. Uh, what I touched my mouse, and then again, this is what happened. Okay, so it's not difficult to see that. Uh, well, in the standard model, everything is inductive. Uh, all parametrically definable sets are inductive. Are all inductive sets are classes? It's a simple proof. Every countable model has classes which are not inductive. And there are countable models whose all classes are parametrically def definable. Those are the famous rather classless models. Um, and now every resplendent model has inductive sets which are not parametrically definable. And this is just an easy consequence of resplendence. You just write the theory that says I am not, I am inductive and not defined by the n's formula. And it is also true for every countable model, but one has to work a little harder. You have to resort to things like uh, generic subsets of a model. But every, every countable model has inductive uh, undefinable sets. So, so now, so here is a list of, uh, and there are some results about it, uh, absolutely undefinable property, you know, and uh, absolutely undefinable property is the property, you know, this phi of R that I was talking about, not to go. There's no expansion will be definable in any in L omega, one omega. So this was this was from a long time ago in the in 1980s. Uh, Henry Kotlarski and I were looking at those things, and we proved that partial in satisfaction classes. Uh, are, and satisfaction classes is something that codes that uh, uh, that codes satisfaction the standard satisfaction uh, includes and, and includes standard satisfaction is not including any false statements, but is an inductive subset. So we proved that uh, they are absolutely undefinable. But sometime after after that, Jim Schmerl looked at it and he read, well, this really has nothing to do with Starsky's uh, uh, theorem of undefined, on undefinability of truth. Actually, all, well, it has something, satisfaction classes by Tarski's theorem cannot be definable, but then Jim noticed that there is nothing special about satisfaction, that every time you have an accountable model, you have an undefinable class, you can never, you can never uh, find one that's uh, L omega one uh, omega definable. It's so, in other words, it always has a uh, continuum many, uh, conti but I'm talking about countable standard models. It always has continuum many uh, automorphic images. And I find it, uh, I find it very interesting because to be a class, it means you're trying to get closer and closer to what a set would look like, like if it were living on the standard model. But because your model is non standard, no matter how hard you try, you either take one that's definable and that's then it's induct in the you know, then it's a class by default. But if you want one, you want to violate definability, uh, it cannot be a class. It cannot even be a class. You have to do something bad to it on, on, a, on a finite part of it or bounded part of it. I think it is a form of Tannenbaum's uh, theorem. 
with some with respect to some properties and i would like to see sort of uh, some some analysis of it maybe there is something even more general than that what jim proved but it's a beautiful it's a beautiful short proof it is in our book if anyone wants to look it up but it's it's a it's, it's a very nice it's a very nice a very clever nice short proof and uh, this is a recent paper that Bartosz wrote and i contributed to it a bit and you know because this is the the my my result with kotlaski induction plays a big role for undefinable classes, uh, well, the fact that pieces of a set are definable plays a big role, but it turns out that eventually there is also something about uh, Tarski's theorem. Full satisfaction class is the satisfaction class that decides every formula in the sense of the model, but there is no assumption um, on, on the, the uh, about of induction. They, they, they can be incredibly non-inductive. There, there have been many talks at MOPA when this phenomenon has been explained and then and, and explored. Uh, but I, I gave a, a short argument for it, and Bartosz also gave an independent argument that full satisfaction classes also are, are never definable by L omega 1 omega uh, formula, which is, I think, it's a nice extension of Tarski's result. It's not that they're undefinable, they're incredibly undefinable. No matter how you look at them, there is no way to make sense of them. Uh, if you just look at addition and multiplication, they are simply absolutely uh, undefinable. And finally, I something I didn't talk much about. This is something that uh, I and Hendrik proved a long time ago, and then it was independently observed by uh, Tanasis Suvaras that in a recursively saturated, countable recursively saturated model, uh, graphs of non trivial automorphisms. It's easy to see that none of them can be definable, but again, one can show, but uh, it's not a difficult proof, but. Uh, in, in our proof with, with Kotlarski, we use to prove that uh, non-trivial automorphisms are absolutely undefinable. We use what's called the moving gaps lemma, but and Tsuvaras just proved uh, a reinforced lemma about local undefinability in models of arithmetic. But again, I find it quite interesting that you know natural uh, natural subsets of an of a non-standard model of PA, like a class and an, a non-trivial automorphisms. Well, they're easy to define, they're easy to make, you can talk about it, prove things about them, but none of those objects uh, is, is easily definable in the ground structure. And perhaps this is a good point for me to stop here. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Roman. Um, let's all thank him again. Um, so um, we have plenty of time for, for questions. So. Uh, any, anyone who wants to jump in, feel free. Mm, one question uh, from, um, of course, this points in many directions towards uncountable models, but this is a different question. So your notion of uh, absolute undefinability depends on counting the number of images of, uh, you know, potential, you know, definable relations or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, it is about them being continued. Uh, uh, so there being uh, uh, a continuum of them. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. So what happens, I mean, how sensitive is this to be the behavior of continuum? I mean, I, I imagine there are situations where if you start changing the universe and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, collapsing continuum in some way or another, mm -hmm. this may right. change one way or another. And I just wonder what remains. So suppose you collapse the continuum, it's some nice enough forcing, but uh, you're still, how can you still trace back that uh, in that model where things apparently become no longer absolutely undefinable, what happens? Do they change completely? Does it depend on the property? Oh, well, how sensitive? Right, right you know, so, so, so speaking naively so from what you say, I, I, I would say indeed, you see that the, because this is all, well, there, there are two things I want to say in general, I, I only looked at the known literature, but the things that were done in the 1980s, perhaps something more was done later about some L kappa lambdas after all, but Kicker Reyes theorem and some, some related theorems are really true for omega one omega. And there are some extensions of it. I think Nadell uh, proved something about it and, and Max Dickman. And, but there is nothing trivial about them. There are no straightforward uh, generalizations of those theorems. So nothing, so if you just change omega one to some kappa, 
And then you say you want two to the you want to have a model of cardinality kappa and two to the kappa automorphic images. It won't do it in any kind of straightforward way. As far as I know, maybe Dave knows something about it, or maybe somebody else who, who's listening. But uh, but I would say that what you said is exactly the thing that probably happens. That if you collapse something, right? So so you have the collapsing function. You 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 make this sort of external intervention into this internal structure of the model. So something becomes definable just because you you made some cardinal countable, and part of the definition is this collapsing function, or you know the sort of the. So 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 that but that's interesting to take a look at. And uh, but as, as I said, I. I I I do not I do not know much about it. I mean, it seems to me that when you're dealing with automorphism groups of countable structures, yes, you're sort of in a descriptive set theoretic context. That that is true too, but very little of this descriptive set theoretic context is used in arguments. Right, but I mean, it means you probably don't have <clears throat> you don't have issues of having. Um, you know, L of three orbits or something like that, right, right, right. possibly. So it, it seems possible right. that you know, these kind of the, you know, the exact value of the continuum isn't so relevant. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I, 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 I would think so. It, in those theorems, they say that, you know, th there is this equivalence. If you just have less than continuum, you have to have at most count. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I have this sort of the same question. You had this theorem about Things are either to the L zero or countable. And again, is there descriptive set theory um, in the bushes there? Not in the proofs that are not, not in the proofs. Mm -hmm. but because uh, not, not in the proof of you know, of, of Kicker, Reyes, and uh, and uh, is is just the proofs are, you know, the, the, the fact that you get con this goes in the in the positive in the positive direction. What, by what's called kicker Reyes lemma, that, that that shows you have this relation, and if for every finite uh, subset of the of the structure you can find an automorphism that fixes that finite uh, subset and finds an element, two elements of the same type, one in the relation and one one outside it, and if it happens for every finite set, then it allows you to build a tree of you know continuum many automorphisms. So there is very there is no descriptive set theory there really. Well, there's sort of a perfect set sitting. Right, there. right. This is a perfect set property. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to ask you about a remark you made when you were introducing L omega one omega. You said you were doing a geometry over the natural numbers. Right. And then later on, you use the word dimension. Can you say more what you meant? Uh, no, no, no. So because I, I use the word dimension a little bit later when I talk just about models with the uh, when you have the models or uh, non standard model of the successor relation, and when you mod out by the uh, finite distance, you you just can think of dimension as the number of those z chains. And uh, and it only makes sense in the in the case of something very weak like successor only, which you just count because you can you can have finitely many. But once you go to the ordering, and you already have to have you know it's nothing of interest happens there. So so I so, so those things you know. Well, there is, uh, in, but uh, but what I did say about geometry was that that uh, the. Uh, First of all, the definability, well, gives you a notion of, well, the all kinds of, and Andres perhaps, and, and Dave could, you know, would help me here, you know, th that would be going to sort of the direction of stability theory, the certain things, the definability in certain kind of structures give you a very clear notion of dimension uh, in the geometry of definable sets. But my point was only that you have this geometry, you know, in multiple dimensions over every, whether its structure is stable or not. That those operations, by, that the first order definition tells you how your your, your your relation has been built from the basic relations of the structure, by by a finite number of applications of those Cartesian products, projections, and intersections, uh, unions, and and complements. So this is not exactly the dimension, but but the complexity of the of the definition. So the it, and every set has a finite complexity. Once you go to L omega one omega, this complexity becomes an ordinal number. But I would be interested in sort of building enough of this visibility for 
low noise on, you know, complexity omega plus one or maybe omega squared at, at most, something that stays at the level that an ordinary mathematician would consider visible, geometrically visible, low, low, low level of the, of the Borel hierarchy. And going, going back for a, just a second to this question of uncountable versus mm -hmm. size continuum. I mean, <clears throat> you're in the setting where you have the automorphism group, which is a Polish group, acting on the space of subsets of accountable structure. Mm -hmm. So the set of orbits of any, the set of orbits of any particular set is a sigma one one set. So it's mm -hmm. necessarily either countable or size continuum. Uh huh. That so that distinct, I mean, the the that distinction is sort of artificial. Well, mm. is really a descriptive set theoretic fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I see. Now, <clears throat> do do you have any other candidate for a measure of how? Undefinable is something. So here you have absolute undefinability, and that's you know, maximum maximum number of uh, of possible images through automorphisms. But maybe you have something in between, like uh, weaker notions of being undefinable that may be twisted. I'm just thinking here, uh, you know, in uh, instability theory, uh, once you go outside of stable theories, uh, many types become undefinable. However, there is all this theory. Of uh, you know, they may have traces that are definable, or they may, or you may do expansions, or you add so-called definability patterns, and uh, kind of recover some of the uh, definability. You don't completely, absolutely lose all definability uh, in a like in a chunk. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there some kind of can, because that might you know be helpful also for your classification problems for models of piano of, of, of arithmetic in general. I don't know. It's a, it, yours is a very strong notion of being undefinable. I mean, the, the name says it also, and it is very nice, but uh, maybe between definable and absolutely undefinable, you have some candidates or additional notions. Well, no, that, that's right. But what, what was, I, I would be, you know, I would be interested in examples. I don't, you know, I, for, for me, it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely not an expert on this subject because I don't really know uh, this, this whole, uh, you know, there is a whole spectrum of, of extensions of, of first order logic. But, but what was surprising to me that if a set, if a relation is not absolutely undefinable, then it is L omega one omega definable. Yeah. So if, if L omega one omega sits at the bottom of those extensions, then, the, but maybe it does not. So that would be sort of something orthogonal to L omega one omega. That sort of looks at those sets, maybe as you said, you know, like a, a set that has some, you know, like definable part and then a little fluff around it or something that really escapes those sort of very simple uh, classifications that, uh, but you know, those subtle things that, that, that people I understand now do in, in, in stability theory. That would be, be fantastic if it applied to, to models of PA, but I, 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 I don't really know. You know, I, you know, I, I only, you know, my, my motivation about all of this was really by, by teaching this course, very elementary course, and sort of uh, thinking about, you know, simple examples. Why is it that multiplication is not uh, definable from addition, and what does it really mean? Yeah. Um, can I ask if you've so, uh, uh, what are some other candidates of of, um, of of maybe things outside of the context of PA that would be um, so absolutely undefinable? And uh, I want to I wanted to suggest one thing that I, I don't know if you know about it or I don't know if it, if it is known, but um, uh, I, so so if set theory with the uh, subset relation and then. Uh, the epsilon relation is not definable from that. Uh, is it absolutely undefinable in that, in that case? Or uh huh. Okay, well, that's definitely that's a good question and perhaps something worth we're, we're looking at. I, I was thinking now more, more in terms of uh, of what you know things that we know about right. the case of models of of PA, for example. How about elementary submodels? Okay, mm -hmm. because I don't I don't remember those things were sort of. 
uh, Tuvaras, Juvaras, actually, had a number of results about, he, he had, uh, maybe it has to be mentioned, he had the nicer terminology, but it wasn't completely equivalent. He, he talked about real and imaginary properties. And for him, the property was, was the imaginary property was this relation that has continued many images in a countable structure. And he had a series of results and they were, they were coming from alternative set theory. So things were happening on models of set theory, but alternative set theory that's by interpretable with, uh, with ZF, I think so. But th those, those would be natural questions. But for us, I was thinking of, of things like elementary submodels or things related in some kind of natural world to the structure of, model of, of a model of PA. So I, I, you know, so if if you are an recursively desaturated model, I don't know, I don't quite know whether we know uh, which elementary submodels of which there are continuum and they are absolutely undefinable. Are they well finitely generated or not? But uh, but all the others. Anyway, no, we know about some of them, but I don't don't think we have a, we have a, a theorem in general. Right. Yeah, for some things, they would be determined by their finitely generated submodels. So, no, essentially, so this was the idea of Duvara that if you if you are somehow determined by a finite chunk of the model, then you are real, right. and otherwise okay. you're imaginary, or you yeah. you you should be imaginary. Right. Okay, other questions? Yeah, I have a question, Roman. Um, so did I understand it right that the notion of absolute undefinability can be changed by forcing? By collapsing the continuum? Right, right. right. Um, is there a known example of this? Like you make a relation that was an L omega, one omega defined number to be definable? But no, no, that's exactly what, when you go, when you go from, uh, uh, let's see. Because it's not immediate, it doesn't follow immediately because you could also have added lots of automorphisms, right? That's true. So I, I, do, I don't immediately see that collapsing will do it, but it seems like it could. Right, right. So, you know, Ali's objection, uh, Ali's objection was not that uh, that absolute undefinability is not absolute. Maybe it is. He, he only objected to the fact that it's already used in a certain precise way. So, so. And, 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 and about the, the sort of uh, property that you're looking at, maybe it depends on the complexity of the property. And uh, right, this reminds but, me, yeah. But, but, but I'm thinking of the, right, because uh, you know, sort of with my sort of uh, narrow knowledge of what's happening by collapsing things and, you know, making uh, something countable that wasn't, you usually end up making more automorphisms that you had from rigid, rigid you can make rigid structures, you know, add and all, all kinds of things to the structure rather than remove from it. So, so, so what was, uh, what was uh, absolutely undefinable higher up, May, may become even okay. So it wasn't definable higher up, but might become. Might, might become, but that's. A, I, I think that's an, that's an interesting question. I I I I think Dave, do you know? I don't know if Dave is still there. And yeah, Audrey, yeah, Dave is there. So I just muted myself. Um, but what what do you mean by absolutely uncountable? Absolutely undefinable for an uncountable structure. I mean, to the kappa automorphisms? No, no, no. no we're not. And, and, uh, what I am saying is, can you? You have some uh, some relation which is absolutely undefinable. Can you force to change this? Uh, right. By say collapsing the continuum. Yeah. Well, it, it, no. doesn't, it, it doesn't seem possible because if you already have those continuum and the automorphisms, you are not going to kill them. No, but now there's countably many, right? Because continuum is not. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah, what was continuum is now uh, count of. Same. Yeah, but you could have potentially added continuum anymore. So right. It's that's not clear. I mean, is there yeah. an example of? Of, of forcing to make a relation L omega one omega definable or just not possible? I mean, I just don't know if that might be trivial. I don't think so, but I, you know, this seems to be related to, so suppose you, you do forcing, now don't collapse the continuum, keep the continuum, but um, as, as we all know, the reals can be, you know, dramatically different uh, in your extension, whereas a, a structure like the complex numbers even if the reals are totally different, the complex numbers, if you keep the continuum, they will be isomorphic to the original ones by the categoricity of ACF, you know, countable cardinals. So that's strange because inside the complex numbers, the reals may be, you know, the new reals, the, the old reals may be meager in the old reals. They may be, you know, as non-isomorphic as you want. You may have to the continuum many ways of forcing non-isomorphic images but the complex numbers will always be forced to be isomorphic. Now, this is a different uh, type of phenomenon, but automorphisms tend to kind of keep track of this sort of thing. And uh, there is this question of Vika, even if you collapse, what about the new isomorphisms that might have popped up, you know, or isomorphic images? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is all weird, but, uh, but there is this weird thing that uh, even if you, you know, dramatically change your reels and make the new reels completely, you know, very different from the old reels. The old reels, meager or extremely small, the 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 complex numbers will always be exactly the same, uh, isomorphic to, you, which is 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 a little bit mysterious, I think. Yeah, I never thought about it, but that's obviously true. Yeah, that is yeah. Really true, actually. So I, yeah. I think it's the case that I mean, you've got a. I mean, saying that um, relation is absolutely undefinable is saying that um, in a sigma one one equivalence relation, there's a perfect set of inequivalent elements. And I think, and that will, be absolute you think and that that should be absolute that sounds absolute yeah yeah i mean it's sort of the same argument as why you know the strong bot conjecture saying that a theory has a perfect set of non-isomorphic models is absolute oh, i see okay yeah so basically if you reformulate it using i see That sounds like Jacques Stern's theorem about sigma and one equivalence classes. But I remember Morley once said to me that that theorem was actually well known for model theory, for equivalence, you know, equivalent um, structures and whatnot. Is that relevant? Make any sense? Um, yeah, well, I mean, so Morley had. I mean, Morley had proved the special case of Burgess's theorem about sigma one one equivalence relation when the equivalence relation was isomorphism of models. Yeah, right. I've done, exactly. that, I've done yeah. that before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. And hi, David. I can. Good to see you. So to speak.